topic for this module is system management, or managing our available grid resources for reliability and affordability. In earlier modules, we've talked about how the, the economic principles for deciding which units to run and what will lower the cost, and we've talked about principles for investing in new plants. And what we showed in the earlier modules is that system costs are lowest if plants are run in the order of increasing marginal cost or merit order. The level of demand will determine how far we go up the merit order stack. Price is determined by the marginal cost of the most costly unit that is run. During low demand periods, low cost base load generators will set the price. In high demand periods, high cost generators set the price while lower cost facilities earn scarcity rents. So again, if we have very low cost Let's get the little pencil running in very low demand periods. This is low demand. We'll be using mostly base load resources and renewable resources. So renewable resources are run first and then the amount of base load resources we need. And so the price is set by the cost of the base load resources that are run. And meanwhile, the solar facilities are earning some rents. Okay, and in higher demand periods we would tend to bring on more expensive units, so we'll call this medium demand. During these periods the price will be set by the peaker unit, and in the very highest demand periods when we have demand reduction as our marginal resource, then the price is set by de the demand reduction resource and all of the other types of generation are earning scarcity rents. So who decides on dispatch of the available resources? Well, we can, there, are, there are two main models for thinking about dispatch. We can have the DISCOMs responsible for uh, dispatching plants that they have under contract. And so there will be a limited set of available GENCOs, those who are under contract with the DISCOM, and the dispatch can be either by contract price or by merit order, the contract price being the long run uh, power purchase price for that, for that plant. A second way of doing it is to have a system operator who has dispatch control across all GENCOs. And the GENCOs all sell their electricity through the system operator, and the system operator is uh, uh, responsible for balancing the demand the DISCOMs have, the, the power that the DISCOMs need with the amount of generation and they do this by dispatch of all the available generators. So with merit order dispatch, the marginal costs are determined in the day ahead market. So a procurement auction can be held for the forecast need. And then on the day of generation, uh, true up to the actual realized demand can be met with fast response resources at their marginal cost. Generators not meeting their obligation then will be charged for replacing that power at the market price at the time they were supposed to provide that power. On the day of service, true up to actual demand is done via a real-time market and a market for ancillary services. So, Let's just go back to our merit order stack. Suppose that we have uh, a demand forecast in the day ahead market. We have a demand forecast. This is the expected demand. Expected demand would have us running some peaker units, our base load, and our zero marginal cost renewables resources. Uh, so this, in the day ahead market, 
the price that would be established for power would be the price of the peakers because our uh, day ahead auction would clear at the price of a peaker power plant and that sets the price for all the power plants. Baseload will be earning some scarcity rents and solar is just, uh, just hitting in above its levelized cost of energy if the peakers are setting the price of electricity. So this is the outcome in the day ahead auction for uh, for generation resources. On the other hand, when the actual day comes around, uh, 24 hours can make a big difference. Uh, demand could be higher or lower. There might be uh, more clouds or less clouds than forecast. And so there might be uh, more demand for air conditioning services. So demand could be higher or lower than our forecast. It's always going to be a little different than our forecast. So let's see what might happen. If we have very low demand, the price would, in the, in the real-time market, would be lower than in the day-ahead market. If we ended up with much higher demand than expected, the price could be higher. So in the day-ahead market, a price will be established and then in the real-time market, the price will be different from the clearing price in the day-ahead market. And the difference between those two prices will determine whether gener the generators um, who change their generation at the margin are compensated for more or less power than is actually needed and that will be determined in the real-time auction and the auction for ancillary services. In a very high demand period, we might need, uh, we might need special reserves because of the extremely high demand, and sometimes those reserves will need to have been engaged uh, before, and so we might need to have a way of compensating those reserves for being available, given that there's a chance we might need a lot more electricity on the day ahead. And so we've talked earlier about how important it is um, to make sure that all the different services offered by different generators are, are compensated. And one of the things we might need to be compensating people for is to be available in case demand is higher than expected. So having reserves available in times of unexpectedly high demand is one of those ancillary services we need to think about making sure is compensated by the system operator.